Korea seems to be the it country of Asia of the moment. Identical K-pop groups, eclectic artists, and Korean actors seem to be taking over our screens. Food like kimchi and K-barbecue have invaded our palates, thanks to the likes of David Chang and Roy Choi, and finally, most of your tech at home hails from this small nation. The Koreans seem to be doing a lot right compared to the rest of the world. From being one of the most wired cultures where everything can be done through your smartphone, to one of the most efficient workforces, and for being renowned worldwide for the love of booze. Seoul is a must stop for anyone who wants to experience modern Asia in a city that is also so deeply rooted in traditional culture. The area is huge, yet always feels like an intimate experience. Walking around, you get a sense of the immensity that is Seoul, but find yourself falling into districts and neighborhoods with their own established identities. Two tips, just stay away from the north and be wary of the soju. We're here in Seoul, and I am absolutely so excited for this episode. One thing I didn't realize, the sun's out, so it's kind of hot right now, but I forgot to bring a coat. And it's like eight degrees, we've been shooting overnight, I guess so many times in different hot countries, but I forgot what a cold country would be like. So tonight, I'm really gonna suffer. So when you're at the airport, the fastest way to actually go into the city of two ways, if you're more than three to four people, just grab a taxi, it's much faster. If you want something a bit cheaper, just go take the big train that brings you there in within 40 to 45 minutes. We're staying at the Tutu House, which is a really cool hipster haven kind of boutique hostel. We booked it through Airbnb, so it's a really cool place to stay. It's in the center of it all, nice and hong day, so it's a nice kind of relaxing location. Seoul's a very spread out place. There's lots of different places you could actually stay at, so it's very essential to really focus and select the ones that you really want to be around all the central action. When I come to Seoul, I personally like staying in the areas of Hongdae and Itaewon. More laid back, kind of a hipster vibe, very kind of relaxed. Lots of different places to see, not as crowded, but still very interesting and still essential to the way people in Seoul live their lives. And it's also really cool because there's always something at every corner that you can kind of discover as you go along. Seoul is a huge city with lots of different areas. This makes it difficult to establish a sense of direction. They actually are not designated by the government, just more so informally to distinguish the different areas. If you're like me, then you'll prefer Hongdae and Itaewon, places with lots of young people, bars, restaurants, and a hip vibe. Seongsu is an up-and-coming district with lots of art spaces and cafes. Sinshan, Seundaeum, Mapo, and Ewa all border the area of Hongdae and are not as central. Gangnam is probably the only place worth staying south of the river. However, it's crowded and resembles just a big modern downtown city. The Jogno and Gyeongbok areas are great for those who just want to see the traditional areas of Seoul. For our first meal, we had to get the very popular Korean barbecue, and I'm so excited right now because it's just served with all these different kind of flavors and little condiments that are around, some kimchi, some chili, there's some crazy Korean music happening behind me. We're the only ones in the restaurant, which is pretty cool. It's really cold out, so it's fantastic to just be here in front of a hot bowl of soup that comes complimentary with all these dishes and just the meat that you can just constantly grill for yourself. So we have some nice fat pork belly and then some kind of beef shoulder cut, I think. I'm so excited to eat all this. So here we have a um, lettuce wrap, some perilla leaves, some nice beef, really fresh, served with kind of like condiments. We've got some scallions over here, some chili, some kimchi, some onions, and you can kind of just put whatever you want in it. And the fresh pearly leaf really just comes, everything comes together. She put one tiny little piece of meat in mine, so I'm just gonna <laughs> go ahead and steal another piece and add it to it. And then more chili, because I think she's, she thinks we're tourists, so she thinks we can't take the heat. So I'm gonna add some of that on there. And that's just gorgeous food. It's so simple, and it's actually pretty healthy. I'm quite surprised. Uh, so she put some 
some eggs with, and she mixed it with more kimchi and more of the scallions, so it's kind of like an omelet that's surrounding our grill pan. So all that fat has to seep somewhere, and it's seeping into that egg omelet. I'm on a high protein diet, so I'm not complaining. That looks really ridiculous. I'm just waiting for that pork belly to cut down before I can really just go right into it. Honestly, it's not Seoul, it's not Korea. Without alcohol, people here love to drink, so we're doing it right, starting at 3 p.m., and we'll be going all night. So we have our second dish here, again with the scallions. And I was just saying I love the flavors here. It's just spice, freshness from the spice and the kick of the kimchi and the fermented soybeans that they put everything together. It's just like a perfect combination. And what I love is that the old lady, very motherly, it's like an instinct, comes to you and, and kind of puts it on a spoon for you so that you know exactly how to eat it so you don't mess around with it. I kind of feel like I'm in school again, but... That's flavor, man flavor like they don't mess around just stop Food is utterly a religion in Seoul. There are so many great places worth checking out. My suggestion to you is to come equipped with a must-try list. Korean food is so diverse that you need to choose what dishes you want to try because some, depending on the region they are from, will only be available in certain restaurants. Aside from this barbecue street, you also have Jang Chun Dong, Pig Feet Alley, or Yong Du Dong, where you can have octopus. Other great traditional eats can be found at Tamra Sikdang, Han Dong Kwan, Shawunga, Sokochon, Yogane, Song Juk Heon, Yong Su San, Ge Hua Oak. It's great to see that the city is surrounded by majestic mountains and it gives this eerie feeling like this modern oasis just popped in the middle of such a gorgeous natural landscape. And true to this, Seoul has been able to retain a historic and traditional value with its crowded streets. To see most of the palaces and historical buildings, head on to the Gyeongbokgung Palace and the Gwanghamum Gate. From there you can walk to the Blue House, Jongmyo Shrine and the Bukshong Hanok Village. Seoul is chock full of good street food, so always keep your eyes open for different treats. Some of our favorites were the Odeng fish cakes, drug gimbap, long sushi like fair, and hoteok, a pancake with lots of sweets in it. So we're trying out the famous spicy rice cakes, and then we saw that they had the split sausage, quite popular over here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly what it states. It's basically like a Rice dumpling with no filling. And just has a really intense kind of red chili coating to it. But I can see why people will eat this in the winter. It's like super heavy. And the blood sausage. Oh shit, you like hermetically packed it and everything. So you'd see that these are really dark and stringy. You can kind of see the, the rice and the intestines still wrapped around it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, wow. The rice noodles. So the gluten is raw. So I got a lot of just jelly and mush in my mouth right now. I think I still want that fried chicken. <laughs> and some soju and alcohol. Lots of alcohol. In this country, you have dumplings as your street food and kind of your fast food. Who the fuck would complain about that, right? I know we're gonna be eating a lot of pork and kimchi, but you can put in a dumpling for me just makes even more sense. And that steam that just comes out is just so invigorating and makes you so excited to take it in. Even when it's hot like this, like your hands get moist. So we got pure meat, pork, dumplings, steam. They're absolutely massive. They're about three inches long. I hope this redeems the spicy rice cakes. Don't hate me. Didn't like it. Not my favorite thing. I think this will be much better than that. Sweet Jesus, these are humongous. Intense, kind of very fresh with all that chive in there. But yeah, this beats a hamburger any day in my book. This is perfect for the beer. It's fairly easy to get around Seoul using either their train system or some taxis. Just be wary of traffic, it can get pretty lengthy at times. Once you've had your share of food and traditional Korean landmarks, Seoul is full of modern attractions that can keep you busy all day. 
Check out the area around the common ground for a hip feel of the city. Hang around the streets of Yonam Dong for a really cool hipster vibe or the Dong Daemun Design Plaza. Also, do check out the amazing Hyundai Music Library or get inspired at the Leon Museum or the National Museum of Modern Art. After all that walking, you could also opt for Korean bathhouse experience. It's like something you've never tried before. So before Kyochan, before Banchan, chicken seems to be like, especially fried chicken, seems to be a huge thing here. Beer. And if there's a bear holding a chick that's holding a pint of beer, pretty much a good indication that we're in for something interesting. So we're listening to hipster music, and I love it in Seoul, each time we're in a place, they actually make you open your own beer. Makes total sense to me. Now, each time you see me traveling alone, you might think that I'm drinking this for three, but there's actually two people right here, so don't, don't worry about me too much. Chicken's about to arrive, some potatoes. One thing was already sold out, that's how popular this place is, so hopefully it's good. Cheers. Who's gonna get fucked up? Everyone's gonna get fucked up. Chicken and beer seems to be such a quirky addition to the dining scene locally, but has really spread all around the city and the world. Other places you can go to to get your deep fried fill are Hanshu, Dobagi, the fry pan, Oksang Dalbit, and Sai Chicken. If you want another funky take on a Korean classic, try James Cheese for their cheesy Korean barbecue. All the weirdos come out at night. No, not really, but it does feel that way sometimes. All of a sudden, the streets are flooded with well-dressed hipsters, good-looking girls and boys, all looking for revelry, and random tets are set up all over the place where after-work employees can huddle in the warmth and just continuously take shots of soju. If you see one, enter and be prepared to stumble out of it. Koreans are very talkative in bars and will gladly show you some of their most fun drinking traditions. Be a yes man and say yes to everything and you'll have a great time. Most of the activity is centered around Hongdae and Itaewon. Some of our favorite bars were Robin Square, Southside Parlor, Sangsu Ri, Magpie, Wolhyang, Bar Da, Full Moon, or Le Chamber. If you're past the wee hours and want to have a bigger night, try out Pistol, Cake Shop, Club Move, Brown, Glamour, or Tea Lounge. And if you're still hungry after all that liquid courage, head on to the 24-hour shop Nguyen Jip to absorb all that alcohol, or wait for Ha Dong Kwan to open to grab breakfast. I love to love and love, but I like to love and 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 love. I love that Seoul is just open 24 hours and that you can go anywhere in the city and just have an adventure. Go into a restaurant at 2 a.m. in the morning, drink soju in Samgyeopsal, and then around like 5 a.m. go to a park and just run and you'll... It's a beautiful city, that's why I love Seoul. Seoul is amazing. Um, I have my friends here. I love the food, I love the nightlife. Everything you can ask for is actually here. But yeah, to top it all, I have my best friends here, so I keep on coming back. After a long night of drinking, wake up early and have some coffee at Coffee Libre, Yon Nam Dong, Blut, Anthracite, or Takeout Drawing. And once you've had your fill, hit the markets. You could go to Guangzhang Market for a great and varied selection of Korean street foods and small stall eats. Everything from pancakes to barbecue to fresh kimchi is available here, and it serves as a one-time big-time food fest. Or you could head out to the fantastic Noryangjin fish market like we did. Just go to a vendor, choose your seafood, head up upstairs and have it cooked multiple ways. Make sure to be courageous. We chose our fish, um, basically our shrimp and our octopus. So what I have in front of me, I call him Mr. Squiggles. Sorry to all the vegans out there. Um, it's dead, it's pretty much dead. This is just like nerve endings kind of moving around. Um, it's sticky, it's sticking to my chopstick, so um, this is gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of it. We'll start with a small piece. Metal chopsticks are always so tough to eat with. And then that goes into, ah, oh, screw it. Let's use my hands. Some sesame oil. It's 
like making out with a fish. It's moving around. Chewy. Do this slide in my head, but it's actually pretty decent. Tastes like sashimi. The head I'm not so sure about. It's not the best looking thing I've seen in my life. This looks like a looks like a sperm sack. Yeah, I feel like like when I bite into this, like sperm is gonna explode in my mouth. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like throbbing. I've eaten some things in my life. Oh, that soldier's coming back from last night. I feel the soldier rising. All right. I don't understand how people can choke from this. That was good. Tasty. The tentacles, for sure. The head, I don't like head. Fuck, I need some kimchi, man. This shrimp's so fresh. I asked for soup, I don't know where that is, but... I like the way it's cooked, it's almost toasted. That with this funky soybean, kind of chili mix. And rice. Mmm. That hits the spot, man. I'm good. I'm good. I came back from Seoul telling everyone I met how much I loved the city. It is such an unexpected place that just keeps growing on you the more you visit it. Probably not as popular for tourists compared to Tokyo over in Japan, but the same overwhelming cultural experience hits you when you land on the peninsula. It has so much character and personality that it is difficult to compare it to any other place on earth. Go out, get lost, talk to friendly locals who are always up to lending a helping hand. Be a witness to what a truly grand and organized Asian mega city looks like, yet continuously take part in the continuous evolution of an already greatly embedded culture. Korea marches at the beat of its own drum, and it tries to make you dance with it. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat for updates and behind the scenes pictures and videos. We would like to thank Access Travel and Tours for making this trip possible and organizing all our logistics for us. Check out their site for more information. So Overnight Seoul was brought to you by our good friends at Cebu Pacific. And here's a quick travel hack to make your travel life easier. You know that person when you're going through security that's always fumbling for things, taking off the belt and the shoes and the jacket and everything? I tell people to always travel hand ready, which means get a backpack or get a bag where you can really reach anything with your hands. That way you don't need to keep things in your pockets. Always travel with pants that don't necessarily need a belt and travel with shoes that you can just slip in and out of.